Hey guys, this is Uncle Phyllis and I'm back with another tutorial. It's been a while, you know, exams and stuff. I also got my webcam stolen. Yeah, how did that happen? Who steals webcam? So let's get into it. Uh, a guy asked uh, how to make a particle that follows the player and I decided to make a tutorial about that. I'll just make two variations and then you can add your own uh, stuff like a timer, a lifespan, an extra parameter, I don't know, whatever you like. So the first, this is the particle we're going to use, as you can see, it's just a freaking emitter of some sort. Now you can see the sphere, I hope so. So got the radius and when you step into it this thing starts to chase you until it just like goes into you this is happening because uh, there's ease by default in the interpolation so if you're making something like a chaser it won't work because it's too slow when it gets closer you may like that and as soon as you leave the circle, it goes right into center. You can disable that if you want. So for example, if we go to the return to center, toggle it off, recompile, it will not go to center. It will just stay in the last position. But I don't like that, so let's take it back. And let's see how this works. So I've got a simple actor with a sphere and a particle system we've got some events on the event and begin overlap just to see if we should follow the player which in our case gets casted uh, whenever we overlap the sphere so for example if it is indeed our player and not some random guy we set it as the actor to follow and we set the boolean should follow player to true and when the overlap ends, when our player exits the sphere, we set the should follow player to false accordingly. Now, the magic happens in the pick function, event, whatever. So, if uh, we're not following the player, we check if we want to return to the center. If we want to return to the center, we just execute the logic to return to the center, which I will talk about later. If we don't want, we just do nothing. If we want uh, the pro uh, the particle system to follow the player, we move it towards the player. So we do not move the default scene root, we just move the particle system. So the initial location of the whole actor, which is the default scene root's initial location, does not uh, get altered. How do we do the actual interpolation between locations? We use vector interpolation to the interp2. So we've got the delta time of the second and an interpolation speed of whatever you like, basically, whatever satisfies you. And the actor to follow location is the target and the particle system's current lo or location is the current location. And then we just set world location and particle system. Now, this can be problematic because, for example, if you go through a wall, it will continue chasing you through the wall, but I've got a solution for that, I think so, and in an upcoming tutorial. Also, the same principle applies to the return to center. We just use uh, as a target location value the default scene root location, which is the center of the sphere actually. Yeah, that pretty much covers up the particle follow area part. Now, the other one, take a look at this. Get close and you can hopefully outrun it sometime. Yeah, and it goes back. Get close, you can outrun it as well. So, as soon as you get into a predefined range, which is actually a circle, but that's geometry and I won't bother you with that. As soon as the player gets close enough, it starts following him. And then it keeps following him as soon as its uh, distance is maintained. So 
if it's, uh, the distance between the player and the particle system is great enough, the particle stops chasing the player and then just stays in place or returns to center like we did with the last one. A little bit of extra work is required here, so as far as we've got some altered values, our max distance, which is like, it's, nah, that's a bad name, we should probably name this minimum distance. The minimum distance uh, that the player needs to be from the target with the particle system, so it starts to follow him. Now, some initialization. The initial location, just because we move the whole actor this time and not just the particle system, so we can like calculate location differences uh, easier and not uh, bother with. Yeah, never mind. So we keep the initial location in the variable and then we set the actor to follow uh, of a player character. You can set it a value from, grab something from the player state or the game mode or game instance if you're in multiplayer or something. And then it's the same piece of logic. So if we should follow the player, we just move it towards the player. But this time we move the default scene root component. But if we want to return to center, to initial location, we set the target to initial location, which is like the first location of the actor. It's a different way of doing things. Some people prefer it, some people do not. I don't know. Be sure to set the interpolation speed low enough so the player can outrun the particle system. Or, I don't know, just make it equal so he can never escape and it's an endless chase. About our range uh, comparing mechanic here, determining whether we should chase the player, we just calculate the location between two vectors, which is essentially negating one with the other and then just grabbing the length and checking if it's less than the minimum distance. So if the player is close enough, we execute the following logic. Thanks for watching, uh, if you've got any questions let me know in a comment or if you've got any other suggestions, I don't know, hit me up on the forums, on the comments right here, leave a like if you did like it, I'll ho hopefully do a follow up tomorrow or the day after or the week after and see you next time.